Hey, how's everyone doing right now? We are here and we are live. I, it's no one's birthday. Mubot is confused. <laughs> Mubot is always confused. And I need to pull up the chat right here. I might be able to chat. It's going to be hard to do this. How is everybody doing online, Mubot? Not knowing what's going on, Mubot. I'm going to have to turn off the music here lest. I'm going to go over to the YouTube channel right now as we're doing this. We'll be starting here soon. So you're going to hear double audio for like a millisecond. Here we go. Pause the video. And now we have the chat. There we go. I didn't take the chat and I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared. We have not started the Kahoot. We are waiting. The code is online. Uh, if you're confused about where to get the code, just ask. There's only four people in right now. This might be a very competitive head-to-head -head Kahoot between everyone. There's $20 on the line as per usual. You know, I think next week, what should we do next week? We've got the test in a week and a half. In one week and a half, we have the test. So we could do a Kahoot on Friday and then we could do a Kahoot again on like Monday night. And it might be crazy on my night, Monday night. Like what if we did a Kahoot Monday night or maybe Sunday, we'll figure it out. Oh, we should definitely, you think it's gonna go crazy? How many people do you think we're gonna have on that Kahoot? Like night before the test Kahoot to review with possible test questions. Like possible test questions, night for the test Kahoot. 150, that'd be insane. Don't do that, King Bowser. Don't do that, King Bowser. <laughs> Over 200, that'd be amazing. We have had some Kahoots close to 200. I think one time we had like 250. It's one of the earlier Kahoots and we used to do it only during tests and now I think it's just a weekly fun thing. So we got two or three more minutes here. I'll bring up the Kahoot screen in a moment. I don't have the block on here. Wait, where's the... Where's the, there's the white thing. Oh, it's behind it. And now it's showing it there. I think that's blocking it. So I hit the UT Marvel button. Look at so many buttons. There we go, look at that. Kahoot. It's gonna be super competitive. If you're here right now, join in. So what, <laughs> this is all the three times. What's up Rocky Top Stats? We're about to have a really competitive game. These are like the ones who are here. Mew, Mewbot. This one say quote? When did that quote go through? <laughs> the heck? I'm really afraid Mubot has become sentient. When did someone do a quote from Mubot? Did I miss it? I think I might be missing some chats right here. Why am I not seeing Ah was there a I know. Mewbot, what are you doing? <laughs> That's a little bit weird, but anyways, I don't like when things happen that I'm not expecting. Is Mewbot like double points? Yeah. Well, let's hope everything's fine with Mewbot. You okay, you okay, Mewbot? You doing all right? Doing all right, big guy? Doing, doing all right? I guess it's just fully, oh, you know what it might be since it's doing a double thing? It might, for some reason, Mubot is talking a lot right now. He's very verbose. And um, I know he's excited. It's Friday. It's Friday. Friday. What's the rest of the lyrics? I don't know. I think Mubot is going crazy. I agree. Mubot has lost his darn mind. He he is so excited. It's Friday. He's got big plans. He's going to study statistics. <laughs> we'll get started here in two minutes. So we'll get started right about at uh, 5.02 Knoxville time. I thought I'm in a different time zone. But we'll get started here at 5.02, and then I'll hit the start, and I'll transfer over to the other screen where where the code will be shown for like a millisecond. But once again, we don't want people like crashing our fun Kahoot. 15 people, look at your odds. 17 people, oh no, join in while you can. Join in while you can. Can everyone hear the Kahoot music? This is over chapter six and seven. What, chapter seven? So this is gonna introduce you to some new topics right here. And it's off, it's off of the next Canvas Canvas content quiz. Almost 20 people. I like it when we got 20 people. 20 people is a good amount. Let's see if we can get 20 here. We got like another minute or so. So it's over chapter six, which is correlation, and chapter seven. This is the 201 first. And then we do the 324.74 right after. So it just takes about 30, 35 minutes. We got over 20. We got over 20. If you're wondering where to go, feel free to ask. We're gonna start here in literally one minute. I'm gonna hit the one minute countdown. When the one minute countdown ends, we will get started. So I hit the button that does one minute for me. I got a one minute button. 
just so I, I can know when one minute happens. My clock is so far over. I shouldn't move things. I'm gonna knock things over, but it's my clock. It's hard to see my clock. So I think we're gonna be good to go here in a moment. 22 people, I like it. Get ready, it's chapter six, correlation, and chapter seven, regression. And these are questions that could appear on the test. So one of the big things, uh, remember this, if you wanna come back and study with this video, I do kind of segment the video on what uh, what class we're doing when, and the questions are questions that appear on the Canvas content quiz. So I can't state that enough, that once again, there's just a prize, small prize for hanging out if you're the winner. And you can submit, if you're first through third, quotes from MuBot, or if you say something really funny, we're all like, hey, that's awesome, then we'll put that for a quote from MuBot anyways. A few people in here have MuBot quotes. But with that, we're gonna get started. Is everyone ready to start in five seconds? Oh, it made the noise for me, you might've heard it. Did I miss chapter seven? We haven't done it yet. So this is a... They are doing lawn work outside. This is a peek into the future. So this is a peek into the future. Get ready. I might give some hints. So when we get to the tough questions, if you're really afraid because you haven't seen the material yet, it's a peek into the future for the next Canvas content quiz. Hopefully not everyone hears that. Future Brian, let's do this. Here we go. Let's start. Correlation and regression is the name of the game. First one, what is the strength of the following scatter plot? I drew an amazing scatter plot, like top 10 scatter plots. That would that'd be number three. They're, they're, it's amazing, but there's better. So what is the strength of this scatter plot? Remember that strength is the vertical scatter. So you don't necessarily look at things like the form in for next question. So you wouldn't look at the form of this, you'd only look at the vertical scatter. And correlation, which you're seeing right here, the value of R, is a value from negative one to one, where zero is the weakest, and negative one and positive one is the strongest. Great job. So please ask questions between, like, please be like, why is it that, or I don't understand. Those are great questions to ask. And everyone who's here gets their thousand points of the week. I appreciate everyone coming to the Kahoot. If you're, King Bowser, I wanna see a win this time. I wanna see the win. Don't let Mario win out. King Bowser, you got this. So if you're looking to see the correlation right here and the strength of it, <laughs> that's on this. If you're looking to see the strength of the correlation, you wanna see the vertical scatter. So be very careful. The idea, this is preparing you for the next question. The idea of there being no association at all would look like a what? Who can describe in the chat right now what no association at all would look like? If there was no association at all, it would look like a what? Like there's no polynomial relationship. There's no, you know, sigmoidal really, it'd look like a circle, it'd look like a blob. So it just looked like a nice job, Victoria there. Um, 100 points, great job. Everyone's got their max points already. Why am I giving out points? Just tons of points everywhere, Margie. Uh, Margie, you are correct. That's exactly it. Just be like a, just a blob. And that is when there's like no relationship at all in the data, no association. Um, you can have non-linear relationships that are strong. This is a strong linear relationship. And the key to this one is it is negative. We might have tricked a few people here. Um, just it's a little stronger. If it looks more like a one, it's closer to negative one. I can't do a negative one. If it looks more like a one or if it balloons out, it's more like a zero. So what you want to do is you want to draw around it. And does everyone see I'm drawing more of a one? So it's going to be closer to one. And since it's going down, it's closer to negative one. So draw around it. The more it looks like a one, closer to one. And it's going down since it's negative one. More it looks like a zero, closer it is to zero. So I wonder what the next question could be. Let's do this Arctic frog. I like that. Classy, how do you say that? That's, I've never heard of that animal. I'm not even gonna try. Okay, I want them to win now because I don't even know how to say it. I have to look that up afterwards. I have no idea what that animal is. Echidna, is that what it said? Okay, I think I can say it. Now I think I have heard of it. I've just never written it. They're in Australia. I'll have to ask my friend Cody about them. If he's seen one, he'll send me a, you know what, but you can't beat focused unicorn. Focused unicorn, that, that is a determined unicorn. They might be extinct now. We don't have any more unicorns, but let's make this happen for Focus Unicorn here. It's an armadillo or something. That's awesome, Ashna, right there. I'm still voting for Focus Unicorn. <laughs> so Focus Unicorn, if that's you, think Knuckles. Oh, okay, that, that makes sense. I know Knuckles from Sonic and Knuckles. Is that what it is? That's, okay, now I'm voting for it too. I got two votes right here for uh, Classy Echidna and Focus Unicorn. Let's do this. Question two. What is the strength of the following correlation? Now be careful. These are linear strengths right here. 
So you could say that this is a strong correlation. It is a strong, cor like not correlation, but strong association, I should say. There is no, I'm basically giving away the answer. There is no linear association right here. There is no linear, just so we don't get Kahoot bombed. There is no linear association right here. And since there's no linear association, the answer is right there. So the key is, and we were mentioning this earlier, if you draw around it and you draw a zero, then the linear association is probably close to zero. If you remember in the previous one, I was drawing a one around it, meaning it's closer to one or negative one. You just have to look at the direction. Does it go up or down and, and down or up? And this one right here is parabolic. So if you put a line through it, the line would be what? If I were to put a line through it, the line would be very what? If I put a line through this, if I put a line through this, the line would be very, very what? <laughs> no, Slonar. <laughs> you kill me, Andrew. If you put a line through this, the line would be very, very what? Horizontal, flat, exactly. There we go, there's the flat line. So the line would be very flat and it would not be a very strong linear relationship. And you can see, once again, it would make a zero around it. So this here is a key example. We sometimes put this as not really a trick question, but it it's a good example of a strong relationship that is not linear, so there's no correlation. What you see right here is the value of R, which is the value of linear correlation. So since the correlation or the association, I should say here, is not linear, it does not have any linear strength. If you have questions, feel free to ask, but let's see, Focus Unicorn? Oh my gosh, I should have never voted for anybody. Arctic Frog is still in the lead. Oh my gosh, Arctic Frog knows their stuff, but will they know it when we get to regression? Let's find out the next question. Here we go. True or false? The following scatter plot has no association. We just covered this. True or false? Oh, no dice like the wrong answer. <laughs> Gosh, I get. Oh, please tell me I didn't select the wrong one. <laughs> I'm worried. I wish they had a Kahoot change your answer thing. Woo! <laughs> I get afraid because I do so many of these and, I, and I'm like, the way when I write cahoots is I always put the first answer as the right answer. So I was like, did I remember to check false? And I was like, I think I remember doing that. So why does this, the question was true or false, this has no association. Who can describe in words why we would say false? And then if you had to write a sentence, which we don't really do much with online tests, but it's false that there is no association here. There is an association. It's just, see if you can complete my sentence. It's false that there is no association. There is an association here. It's actually a very strong association. It's just, there's no linear, exactly. There's no linear. So if someone said there's no linear, that'd be a true statement. Um, Stevenson, we might be able to get you in. Stevenson, do you have your phone out to do, do you have your phone out right now, Stevenson? I think we'll be safe. Let's give it a shot. Stevenson, if you're, and we'll do a second Kahoot, Stevenson. So um, give it a shot right here. It was on the screen earlier, so <laughs> take it down right there real quick. Pause the video. So pause the video if you need, and then hit the live button to rejoin. Okay. And Andrew is right. There's a parabolic. So make sure you have that right there at the bottom right there. And let's do this. Here we go. So let's do the next question. Arctic Frog. What? What is going on? Are you watching Arctic Frog just... just they're supposed to be bouncing around. They're a frog. Great job, Stevenson. Arctic frog is just staying right there. Arctic frog is like, no, dynamic pelican, charming dragon. I don't care how charming you are, dragon. You're staying in third place. Focus unicorn is back, though. Let's see if focus unicorn can win this. Here we go. Which of the following is required to make a scatter plot? Now, these are the conditions. These are the conditions. Q, Q, straight enough, no outliers. And then there's a fourth one for chapter seven, plot doesn't thicken. We'll talk more about that later, but Q, Q, straight enough, no outliers, plot doesn't thicken. So what is the one that you have to have to make a scatter plot? You have to have this condition. <clears throat> if you don't have this condition, you're not doing scatter plots. You can't make one. Q, Q. QQ means that it's bivariate quantitative. It just means on the x-axis and the y-axis, you have quantitative variables. So there are three conditions for correlation. Have your notes out, be writing these down. The three conditions for correlation are QQ, which is quantitative variables. I just like saying QQ because it's two quantitative variables. Straight enough. Does everyone see how a straight line would go through this pretty well? And no outliers. 
No outliers means that there's no extreme outliers. Now, you should watch today's office hours. I ah, My piercing got me again. But um, we will, on the test, make sure it's an extreme outlier. It'll be pretty obvious. We want to make sure, at least at this level, that you understand what the conditions are, what they mean. And then they can be a little subjective, but we try to make it, you know, if we're going to give a test to 1,400 students, we don't want the question to be too subjective. We want it to be pretty clear that we're saying there is a problem or there is not a problem. But how are we doing? That's so weird. Was it getting the reflection? Oh, it's doing the, the red right there. With that, we are on to the next part of the question. Let's do this. Here we go. Is Arctic Frog? The leaderboard is locked up. The leaderboard is locked up. I got this shirt at a Goodwill. And so I was like, I like it. It's really soft. It's like a, are you a big Cardinals fan, Andrew? I got it for like $4. I think I got it. Maybe I got it at like, what is the place? Planet Exchange. Maybe I got, it might've been Planet Exchange in Knoxville. Great, great, uh, great clothing place right there, Planet Exchange. So shout outs to them because they, they need our shout outs. <laughs> Outliers can make a strong correlation weak and we might have an example right there. Yeah, I just, I like comfy shirts <laughs> with, with nice designs. It's got burbs on them, so I like it. Outliers can make a strong correlation weak. Wait a minute. We've got a really strong correlation right here. Super strong, basically one, because it goes in a straight line, it goes up. And then we have an outlier down here. If you draw around it now with the outlier, it becomes zero. And without, it's very close to one. We do our little trick right there. Very true. Very, very true. In the chat right now, tell me what outliers can do. What can outliers do? Can they make a strong correlation weak? Can they make a weak correlation strong? Can they make a negative correlation positive? Anything, Ashina, right there. Great job. Victoria, anything you write. Allards can do anything. I need like the anything is possible. All I've got is, I've got that. I've got that. We need more wows that we need. Wow. <laughs> I should just record myself doing it and be like, oh, I totally got Owen Wilson doing it. But um, outliers, when it comes down to it, can do anything. They, if you put the outlier, just move it around, it'll change correlation if it's really far away. So if you see anything on the test saying like, an outlier, <laughs> we still got it. Um, if you um, have an outlier, it can do anything. So anything on a test that says something like, can an outlier make a weak correlation strong? Can an outlier make a positive correlation negative? Can an outlier make a negative correlation positive? Can an outlier make a zero correlation negative? Anything. It doesn't matter. It, can an outlier just true? Here, wait, wait. Here's the new question in the chat right now. True or false? True or false? Can an outlier, that's the true or false question. <laughs> it has to be relative to a, to a scatter plot. Can an outlier, true or false? True. <laughs> that's it. Can an outlier do this? Yeah. Yeah, an outlier can do this. So do you see why we say no outliers? Just think about it. We don't want outliers because they change the relationship. And then you're kind of pointing to what the relationship does with the outlier. So the outlier becomes the focus of the correlation. There was a very strong positive correlation right here. And then with the outlier, all of a sudden, great job, everyone right there. With the outlier, all of a sudden, it's just the outlier we're describing. So you don't want to describe just the outlier. You want to describe the data. And that's why we say QQ straight enough. No outliers. Ah, oh, you never know. Wait, it might be a good or bad outlier, Jacob. Because what can an outlier do? Anything? It's not like they can do anything like any question. They could do anything to your grade. Uh-oh. You're like, I'll take the chance. I'll roll the dice. <laughs> Let's give it a shot right here. Let's see what the next question is. Let's roll that dice. Arctic Frog leaderboard is locked up. Let's see if we can shake it up with the next question right here. Here we go. Pick the strongest correlation. These are questions. Oh, wait a minute. Uh-oh. I don't think I made a mistake right here. An outlier couldn't be in the IQR. So yeah, in the univariate sense, and that's why I said, uh, Richard, really good question right here is people debate over which of these is the strongest. There's two right answers. There's two right answers. Um, both of those are equally strong. I'll talk about that in a moment right here. Um, so specifically that question, be very careful. I guess you could make a, can an outlier be in the IQR question? Richard, that's worth, you got 1500 points this week, Richard, because that's a really good clarification. Because when I say can an outlier do something to a correlation, it can do anything to a correlation, but there are certain things outliers can't do. Like an outlier wouldn't be in the IQR. So Richard, really good clarification right there. Those previous an outlier can do anything questions are related to uh, changing a correlation. So an outlier can do anything to correlation in as it moves around a bivariate plot. Asha, I got it right here. 
we have right here two correlations. Can LR be between two modes? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it kind of could be. Um, that's And that would be a univariate idea right there because remember, modal stuff is for like uh, univariate quantitative data. So if you had like really two strong peaks right here and then an outlier all by itself, it's kind of an outlier from both distributions and you've kind of got, like if there's two peaks in a histogram, yeah, you could kind of see outliers in the middle because they don't conform to the rest of the data. And th these are these weird scenarios you run into. And you might even separate the histograms. You might separate them by some variable because if you see that strong of separation, there's probably a categorical variable separating quantitative distribution one and quantitative distribution two. Really great questions. The test is the 29th, a week from Tuesday. We're gonna have more cahoots and a lot more fun. And these questions right here are definitely on your Canvas content. And if you take a look at this right here, what, what do we measure? Like how could someone determine which of these is the strongest? Can anyone put a good definition of like the strongest correlations will be closest to this or this? The strongest correlations will be closest to this. An outlier is 1.5 times IQR. An outlier on a box plot is 1.5 IQRs above Q3 and 1.5 IQRs below Q1. And that's how we identify them on the box plot. Great question right there, Stephen. And the closest to absolute value of one, people are getting it right here. The strongest correlations are gonna be closest to one or negative one. And the weakest correlation is this right here. So remember that negative 0.99 is just as strong as 0.99. Does that make sense? The strength of the correlation. What does this negative indicate right here? Since this has a negative, that's telling us something about not its strength, but its what? Since that has a negative, that's telling us about not its strength, but its direction, exactly. The positive and the negative tell you the direction where exactly negative slope, the line goes downward now. So we see here that that doesn't change its strength, it's just telling us it's a strong negative correlation. This one right here is a strong positive correlation. Very important we know strength, direction, form, and unusual features let's do this is is it still arctic frog charming dragon versus focused unicorn this is going to be a battle for the ages let's see it happen arctic frog amazing job these are new questions and arctic frog is just let's see can they hold the arctic frog is like stop mentioning my name stop let's do this you got this arctic frog let's do this here we go next question i didn't jinx you i swear if the correlation is negative 0.40 what is the value of r squared wait what we need to know for this question, because we haven't done it yet in class, is that correlation is R. If you know what correlation is, correlation is R, you can figure out R squared. Just think about it, wait, correlation is R, and then R squared is R squared. Correlation is R, and R squared is R squared. So it would be, what's four times four? 16. So all we're doing right here, if you go to your calculator, and I'm trying to think, I think 320, 474 will need more calculator stuff. I need to warn them before the next Kahoot that they'll need a calculator. There's gonna be some calculator questions and you might wanna stay for it. There, I will say this, uh, 201, you could win the next Kahoot because there is some like, what graphics should you use? Cause they cover that stuff too. So if you wanna stay for the next Kahoot, once again, they take about 25, 30 minutes uh, cause we're getting near the end of this one. If you wanna stay, play the next Kahoot, possibly win. There are some questions you will know and I'll give hints and the questions are towards the end and it relates to those classes. Um, but does everyone understand that we're just squaring that to get R squared because correlation in notation is equal to R. So very important that we know R is correlation. R is correlation. And so we just square it. Now, here's a trick question. You ready for a trick question? If R squared is 0.09, what is the value? If R squared is 0.09, so R squared, is equal to 0.09, what was the value of correlation? If R squared is 0.09, it's a little bit of a trick question. Victoria, you might be right. Victoria, you might be right. So you have to square root it, but watch out. What happens when you square root something? When you square root something, you have to look if it's, I think you're saying it right there, Stephen. It's, it would be plus or minus three. And you would look at the graphic itself to see if the line is going up or down, down or up. And so if you square root something, how do you know if it's positive or negative? You look at the graphic to indicate the sign. So, um, yep, so if we did this on a test, we've done it before where we have that you get the value of R squared and then you have to get R, so you square root R squared to get R. Does everyone understand that if you go uh, from R squared to R, you would square root. If you go to R to R squared, you square. Does everyone understand that? Who's, who's with me on how to get R from R squared and how to get R squared from R? It's just squaring and square rooting. 
but when you square root it, you have to look to see if it's positive or negative. Awesome job right here. New concept. We'll be learning it this week, but most people got it. Not too bad. How about we do Arctic Frog? You got this, Arctic Frog. You got this. Sorry, they've done such a good job. I got to root for them. If someone scores an 85 and we predict they will score a 75, what is their residual? So they actually scored an 85. We predicted they'd score a 75. And I've got a little hint right here that the residual equals actual minus predicted. Wicca, wicca. It's the residual wrap. Residual equals actual minus predicted. So the residual equals the actual minus the predicted. What was their actual score? What was their predicted score? And the residual is basically how much you miss by. Great job. I think everyone got it. This is a new concept I wanted to introduce. It is on the, the Canvas content quizzes. And I like using these to show you examples of what you could see. Because if you can solve this and know the concepts here, you should be good for the Canvas content quiz. Is, how, how does everyone feel on a difficulty level for this one? I know some people missed it. But on a 1 to 10, how difficult is this question? If you got something like this on the test without the hint, if you know that the residual is someone's actual value, minus their predicted, that's how we get residual. Knowing this formula, one, I like it right there, I like it. You know what I like? I like Arctic Frog in the lead. Oh my gosh, it's gonna happen. I'll run away, This they are literally running away with this. Let's see, can they keep it up? I'm sorry, Arctic Frog, I'm sorry, you got this, you got this. If a residual is positive, which was larger? We got a horrible drawing, whoever do this is a horrible artist. So which would be higher? Would it be, we have here the actual, the predicted, the intercept of the slope. So the only two things we should focus on are the actual or the predicted. If you look right here, the black dots right here are the actual values. And then we have here the residual, it's positive. And then we have the line of prediction. So this is the residual right here and it's positive. And what was higher? The actual value. Great job. I think hopefully this graphic makes a little bit, who can understand? I was like debating this. What if Arctic Frog was, a it could be, you never know. You never know. It's very interesting. We've had some people, um, we had some people who've come close or like via different sections. So great job, good review. And they're, they're allowed to play and win. It's awesome. You never do know. Does everyone understand right here that the line when we do a regression is gonna make predictions? So imagine this is how many hours you study and your grade. What happens the more you study? The more you study, the what your grade, or we would predict. And think about this. We would say we predict your grade will do what the more you study. The more you study, if this is how much you study, and this is grade right here, the more you study, we predict your grade will do what? We predict your grade will do what? Who knows what we predict? There's also a limit. <laughs> we predict your grade will do what? Improve, go up. And there is a limit. There would be like a non-linear. I see what you're saying there, Rocky Top Stats. There's like a non-linear relationship that when you plateau, so there might be some non-linearity to this. And then take a look at this right here. What we have right here is the residual. So this is what the person actually scored, but we predicted they would score what to it. Here's what they actually scored, and we predicted they would score what? Do you remember how we talked about someone scoring an 85 and we predicted a 75? So do you see how the visualization of the residual is? If we predict an 85, and they actually score a 75, all we're doing is just taking the distance the two things are away. So if you want to see which ones would have very small residuals, you'd have to go to the ones close to the line. But think, if this person actually scored, let's say, a 75, and we predicted they would score a 78, what would this person's residual be right here? Who knows? Extra thousand points for the week, secret extra thousand points for the week. This person right here scored a 75, and we predicted negative three. Steven, you got it right there. Because when you think about it, they actually scored a 75. So their actual, their actual is equal to 75. Their predicted is equal to 78. So, oh my gosh, 78. So the actual minus the predicted, actual minus predicted equals negative three. Oh my gosh. I need to look at the keyboard while I type. <laughs> actual minus predicted equals negative three there we go let's do this let's see who's gonna win arctic frog was that you that one person it's 500 points here we go last question let's get some hype in the chat let's do this who's ready for the last question i need some i'm ready in the chat let's do this i got some mega man here who's ready in the chat last question hype awesome let's do this here we go adding all the residuals together will sum up to zero 
Adding all the residuals together will sum up to zero. We call it the line of best fit. Who knows for this last question? Arctic Fox or Arctic Frog. Will adding up all the residuals add up to zero? Look at it. We have a bunch of yellow that are negative. We have a bunch of yellow that are positive. The line goes through the middle. The line perfectly slices through the middle. And since the line perfectly slices, the answer is true. So the way this line of best fit works, we call it the line of best fit. The line kind of like balances through the points. Does that make sense? Like the line, when it goes through the points, will... <laughs> Oh, Steven, perfectly, as Mubot says it twice. So the line perfectly goes through the middle of it and balances out. So if you were to add together all these positive and negative values that these points are above and below the line, you would get zero. That's the way everything balances. Would... <laughs> I have no idea. Let's find out. who is it Arctic Fox? Who's the big winner right here? Dynamic Pelican. If it's not Arctic Fox next, it's definitely Arctic Fox is the winner. I think it is. Charming Dragon. Great job. 10 out. They all got 10 out of 10. Wow. Wow. Amazing work. We're going to start up the next Kahoot here in just a moment. With this, just remember that the next Kahoot does have 201 questions. You never know how many 32474s are going to show up. Generally, their game is smaller. We are going to review some stuff that's important for 201. If you want to hang out for 30 more minutes, possibly win, you never know. You can say, I won the advanced Kahoot. Like, I won, what if someone like did a, a repeat? They win the 201 in the advanced Kahoot. That'd be pretty awesome. So if, if you're Arctic Frog and you want to hang out, or if you're anybody and you want to hang out, is everyone ready to see the next Kahoot right here? What were the, what were the questions that were generally missed? Well played, difficult, I didn't write any difficult questions. Didn't make the kahoot hard enough. Didn't challenge everybody. Could work harder at this. I'm sorry. Okay, let me get the next kahoot going here. We'll get the next kahoot up and going. The kahoot will be the code will be up in just a moment. Rock top status. Great work right there. I'm loading up the next kahoot. Play new game. Can I do that? I can do that. Everyone will at least get an A. I'd love that. I'd love it if everyone got an A. Um, that's always when I. Uh, when I teach like a smaller class, usually I'm like, let's have everyone get an A and I hope I don't cause stress on people because I'll be like, you know, what if everyone in this class got an A? If everybody in this class got an A, there's like, oh, there we go. It kept showing create and everything. Oh no, I'm, I'll post, I'll show it here. We we generally show this one here. Um, I just show it and then we hope we don't get, by this point, we just hope no one jumps into our Kahoot. You'll be able to hear in a moment that I'll have the coot going. Well, we don't mind if people, as long as no one's crashing it, we don't care. So, because we, we've done that before. And I think you can hear the coot in the background. So let's bring up the Kahoot. I really need to put things on my, blocked. Can't see what it is. Here it is. Kahoot code, Kahoot code is up. Okay, I need someone to pick some music. I've got my favorite music, but I need your advice on the music. We've got adventure, disco, funk, reggae, trance, beatbox, 8-bit, futuristic, indie pop, Christmas, Halloween. we got original fantasy adventure. Who wants the music preference? Who's got the... Who's got the... Turn the dial, knob on the music dial to what? What are we turning it to? My favorite's disco. It's like the most unique. I listen, I listen to them all, and I like the 8-bit too. I mean, of course I like the 8-bit. Mega Man knows I like the 8-bit right there. Yeah. It's like chill. It's like, it like sounds like it's trying to be bad, but then it's actually like good. So, it's like dramatic. What do people think? You know what, you know what we need to do in this interim right here while we're talking? What's, what are the three celebrities that we should try to get to come onto one of our cahoots? Because especially with the test coming up, it'd be so crazy if we got a celebrity here. We, you know, we had a Julio here, and thank you so much, Julio. Julio was here for our second biggest coup of the semester. I think we had like 40, 50 people playing. First coup, we had like 120. Who should we get? Like, who should we, who should we try to get? 
if Dave Ramsey ever wanted to come on and give people a hello and give them some uh, life advice, I think Dave Ramsey gives some really good advice for trying to get the buzz off my mic. Owen Wilson, Jeff Bezos, <laughs> Peyton Manning. If Peyton ever wants to come on here, he's you know he knows some UT people. Peyton's always welcome to come on here and give shout outs to students. I know he's a busy, busy guy. All these people are busy people. So with this said, I just want to make it clear that we just we put it out there in the we put it out there in the world and we just say you know, hey, if that happens, that'd be cool. Like imagine I don't know we we were trying something. Um, you guys want to see a secret thing? Do you guys want to see a secret? Oh, I shouldn't show it because I'll show it next week. So if I don't show it, all right, I'll show you guys something fun right here. All right, this is this is a secret thing. Don't tell anyone. One stat two hundred one. Hey Brian, what's up? Hey Adam. Oh, what's this? Adam, what are you doing? Adam, no! Hey everyone, Jason here. We might have a two be continued on that right there, but our original plan, Jason, Jason's at, I'll let you see the rest of that when we actually use it this semester. <laughs> I'll see in the form of Brian Stevens. When we use that this semester, well, our original plan was, so you'll see the rest of it then. Our original plan was to get uh, like Philip Fulmer. And we were like, we need someone of like great power or something. Like Jason was gonna be like walking around. He's like, you know, we need someone to like, we need someone to like do the Kahoot and Brian's not here. And then um, maybe we could do that. Maybe we could use, I could cut the uh, Brian's gone thing. So if we do get someone, I could have them start the Kahoot. Like I could, they could be like Brian's gone and that could like poof back into existence. Cause I, I can do that. I can, oh, it didn't, wasn't large enough snap. Oh, ah, there we go. I'll have to put it on the button so I can press the button. But anyways, if you have ideas, we're always looking for ideas. A lot of fun ideas that everyone comes up with. And then we make new videos as the semester goes on. Andrew, one of these days you're gonna see the Smash Brothers intro live on here. With that, let's start the one minute countdown. We got the one minute countdown going as people are joining in. Anyone got any questions as we're about to start the advanced Kahoot here? We got 15 players, good players right now. I like when we got 20, 20, 20, like I like it. I feel like we got you know, like a bunch of people joining and playing. Remember the Stat Tool 1 project is due tonight. Newbot is really excited about that as he tells us multiple quotes today. Which quote are you gonna, Poggers? Oh, thank you. Healthcare is connected to living, Newbot, you are right. We're on like the 30 second countdown right now. Any other quotes from you, Blot? Which one of you, <laughs> are you still checking your emails for the project? I am, I am. I've been trying to keep up with them and check as many emails as I can and giving advice and having people write uh, some really awesome projects. Some really awesome executive summaries and outros. Calzone, Calzone. Join in Calzone. Calzone, if you win, we'll have to send it up to New York. You are not too late. You're here for the second Kahoot. We're so glad to have you here, Calzone. Calzone is the fan favorite. Calzone Tyrone joined in one of our first live Kahoots. Played, and I think placed. What'd you get, third place, Calzone? You're in for some tough competition right now. Are you in the game, Calzone? Are you in the game? I missed the Thanos picture. Third or fourth? It was like 100 people. We gotta show some, we gotta show some UT volunteer spirit here. We got it. We got to be like, okay, we got this. Calzone is a great competitor. Is everyone ready to start the Kahoot? Calzone, are you in? Have you joined? That might be you right there. You might be creative. Ooh, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> reading. I don't do reading. I do mathematics. I do statistics. Awesome. Let's do this. Uh oh, we know who Calzone is. Stiff competition here. Let's do this. Let's get ready to start the Kahoot. Let's jump over to the main screen now. Oh, no, no sadness. What is the right syntax for if? English is hard. I'm not even joking there. So the if, think about like how Excel works. So if you're not in 32474, don't worry. Just think about how Excel works. Oh, no, did I put in the... Oh, no. Did 
Did I not change one of those answers? Oh my gosh, are we going to have to reset the Kahoot? Did I put two right answers? Because when I was copy pasting. Why is it I always make a mistake on this one? <clears throat> The two people, the two people who, can I adjust it? Can I adjust it? Can I assign points to this one? <sighs> was it you, Rocky Top Stout? Wasn't one of these you? Was one of these you? If, here's what I'm going to do for these two people. If one of these people is you and you come in second or third, I'll still award you the $20, $20 prize, but it only has to be the two people. So Rocky Top Stats was one of those you? If you are in this yellow group right here and you can only if you're in this, these two people and you come in second or third out of the 18 people, you still get the prize. How's that sound? Is that a good deal? Rather than restarting? Because Brian can't write Kahoot questions. Are we good to go on that? Okay, we got thumbs up. Let's do this. Let's do the next question. So I want to make this <clears throat> very clear here. That with this right here, we have the if condition. And it just takes a condition. And then what happens right here for all the 324 74s? This is the what that happens if the condition is true. Inside of these brackets, 474, 320, help us out. The if is checked on the condition. There's a singular condition right there. And we what is happens with the brackets? The brackets do the what? The squiggly brackets right there do the what? 320 is 474, who knows? The if has a condition, and then inside the squiggly brackets is the what that runs. The runs the code, exactly, runs the code. That's the code that runs. So if the condition right here evaluates to true, then this code right here runs. If this condition evaluates to false, then it doesn't run unless you connect an else to it. So get ready for an if else, and let's see if Brian knows how to write questions. Dazzled Swan, that's a nice name. Oh, it's going to be good competition right here. Let's do this. What is the right syntax for if else? This is a little bit different. I'm not blogging the questions. Maybe that's the answer. So with this right here, the if else has a little bit different of a condition because it actually doesn't look at a singular condition. If else does not look at a single condition. It looks at multiple conditions over a vector. If you're seeing things like the skeleton, we generally use that phrasing for a for loop, and we need to do the vector over a condition right here. I don't know how I made mistake copy pasting, but it is a vector over a condition. So what it does is it can convert data. And do I have R open Bowser saying, watch this, class, class is over. Class, class is not over yet. We're bringing out Brian Jr. That's bro. We got so many Brian's right now. It's craziness. We have is I don't know, my voice keeps getting deeper, but I need to fix it. Okay. So with R right here, I'm gonna open up R real briefly, just so we can see what happens if we have numbers right here. Imagine we have numbers and the numbers go from negative four to five. If you go if else and you go numbers less than zero and you say negative and then positive it'll recode that for you. Does everyone see how quickly this recoded it for me right here? I just said, if else, if the numbers are below this, then say that they're negative, and if this, then they're positive. And you can do this really, really quickly to recode stuff just using the code right there. <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. I have some fun with it. My favorite voice is this one right here. It's just pretty crazy if I talk like this the whole time. So that's the brawl voice, and then the Brian Jr. voice is the other voice. So this is how we use the if else. <laughs> Thank you, Calzone. And then if two equals equals two, I like writing little questions like this on the test. What will this code run? What will this code run? Remember, this is the condition. So here's the condition. If two is logically equal to two, which is true. So if, if that is there, what will this code do? It'll just say, Brian, that's what the code does. Now this code right here will ask is two equal to three and the code will do nothing. Unless I put an else here, and then we run the following and put another code for it to run. Now it'll say Darren. So you see it, it runs this code, the else, because the condition of value to false. One big thing to note right here, and I'm putting a comment, uh, singular condition. And then this right here is condition over vector. So if you notice right here, 
or vector over condition rather. I cannot type vector over condition. So we have a vector over a condition, and then here we have a singular condition. Little small things right there. Let's see who's in the lead now. It's, oh, Calzone, you are a pro. I told everyone, Calzone, let's see this. Let's see who's gonna stay in the lead right here. Let's do this. Which of the following is how we display bivariate quantitative data? 201, you should know this instantaneously. I'm not blocking the answer, don't worry. It's not side-by-side -side box plots. It's whatever that is up there. That's how we display bivariate quantitative data. Who knows what that is? That's the display for bivariate quantitative. Technically, it could be a time plot, but it's it's not. This is something. So with this right here, Brian, the brain. <laughs> I have gotten stuff with the brain on it. Oh no, Calzone. If you did if else two equals equals. So that would, I don't know if it'd run. A scatter plot. Um, well, thank you. I'm glad that's helping out right there. Well, oh, thank you. That's that's. Well, I'm glad it's it's helping out. It's you just have to kind of break it down. We always say read the code as a sentence. So if we look at the code right here, at first I thought they're trying to imply that it was a side by side box. It's scatter plot. Yep, scatter plot. Um, would that print, Darren? I'm asking. Essentially, we could try to run the code. Let me go right here and let's look at. Oh wait. So let's look at the syntax of this and and see an issue right here. So the if else. If you look at the syntax right here, I'm going to show you your syntax versus the syntax of if else. And syntax just means the inputs it takes. So I'm going to show you the inputs it takes right here, and it's showing it above. This is the uh, the vector um, with logical test. So I like to write more than that. It's the vector with the logical test. This is if yes, and this is if no. So just a quick review of coding again. This is the function, which has parentheses, and then there are how many arguments inside of here. This is the function with how many arguments. How many arguments are inside of there, and how do we know where the arguments are at? How many arguments are inside this function? How many arguments are inside that function? Who knows for a thousand points? Extra thousand points of the week, who knows? Boom, Winston right there. Three separated by the commas. And that's exactly what I would have asked next. I'd say, when does each argument begin? And it's after each comma. So you could do this right here. Sometimes people like to change the way it's written. It'll run the same way. So if you look right now, this if else is incomplete. It's written like an if is written. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna make this an argument right here. And then I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna turn this into a parentheses. It might be hard to see, so I'm gonna zoom in one more time, but this is a squiggly bracket. Notice how it's like a squiggly bracket. Now I think you should be able to see it. That's a squiggly bracket. This is a parentheses right here. Parentheses go around functions and squiggly brackets go around code. So this runs code inside the squiggly brackets and these are parentheses. So what do you think this code will run right here? What do you think this code will run? Because this is a vector of length one. 2 equals equals 3 will produce a logical vector of length 1. And to show that, we can run this right here, and it's a logical vector of length 1. So what will this code do now? So it's going to assign based on what it is. It'll say, Darren, bingo. What will, what will this code right here do? This code right here will do... Brian, Darren, Darren, Darren. Brian, da does everyone see that now it's doing the test across the vector? It's saying is two equal equal to, which means logical equals, is two equal to two, is two equal to three, is two equal to three, is two equal to four, true, false, 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 and then true, false, false, when we run this, is turned into Brian, Darren, Darren, Darren. Hopefully that makes sense on how the if else works. It's gonna take a test right here on a vector. So this is the test on the vector. And then whenever the trues are, it's gonna run this code. And wherever the false is, it's gonna run this code right here. So that's the position of the true code, position of the false code. Who is this Darren guy? He's my brother. He's my brother from from my mother, same. <gasps> you were right, Cal don't leave us Calzone. Calzone, I have faith. Not that I don't want my students to win, but I have faith in you. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you got this. You got this, King Bowser. You got this. Which of the following is how we display bivariate categorical data? Don't lose all hope. Mubot will give advice. Mubot will give advice. How do we display that bivariate categorical data? Ooh, Mubot's quoting some Thanos at you right there. Mubot thinks the world is perfectly balanced right now. 
Nice job. Everyone knew that was a mosaic plot. As I said, there is some review in here. Um, so definitely 201, if you knew that, that a bivariate display of categorical, categorical data right there. Whoa, Calzone. Holy mackerel. That's some awesome points right there, Calzone. Will these nice visual hints be on the exam? They might not be. And Calzone is just destroying everyone on the points. He's in the legendary tier. I'm not even up there. I think I'm gold tier right now. Just man. Jeez. I'm gold tier. Calzone is legendary tier. One of these days I'll get up there. But <laughs> so next, next question right here. So remember, he's Calzone Tyrone. He's like top player here. So with this right here. <laughs> You bot likes him. So the grind is real. Exactly. You just gotta, you gotta like, what is it? Like, you gotta catch all the Pidgeys and then just evolve the Pidgeys and then get to the level 40. That's how we do it right there. Silver tier. Victoria, you're one of the first people I've seen at silver tier. So Victoria has reached silver tier. Great job right there. Um, so we have tiers now, depending on how many points you have. And so we will continue on here with the next question. Let's do this as we have some fun here. Inspired Wombat. Inspired Wombat. Let's continue on to the next one. Inspired Wombat. But Speedy Dragon. Golden Boa? Red Swan? Sounds like sounds like movie. So Golden Boa versus Red Swan. Let's do this. What shows the data values in a mosaic plot? So these two things are best friends. Woo! Can I not go off the screen anymore? Well, that's sad. There we go. I'm not blocking the answers. I mean, the actual answer. So a mosaic plot always goes with this, and we'll be seeing it here in a second. A mosaic plot always goes with a contingency table. So a contingency table, I mean, maybe I'll show you a visualization one in a moment here, but a contingency table is going to show you the counts in a mosaic plot. And 201, this is where your class ends. Your class will do uh, the chi-squared test of independence. Has anyone ever heard of the chi-squared test of independence? That is where 201 will end. Um, these will be on the 201 final. So this actually, this question right here about contingency tables could be on the first test. Um, it's about to, yep, in biology, they're classic biology stuff right there. Um, exactly, in my 1967 stats book had it. I've got a 1967 stats book signed by George Box, a famous statistician, all models are wrong, some are useful. Um, my dad got it, my dad is an actual statistician, I'm just a business analyst. I'm serious, my dad used it? Oh, that's so awesome. Is it Box Hunter Hunter? Do you have it? Andrew, do you have that book? Or do you do you like like do you have it near you now? There's a little tiny fly. So I'm wondering if it's like the um what's it what's it, what's the type of book is it? You might literally have the same book. Let's find out. Get ready for the next question. Let's do this. Andrew and I'll find out if we have the same book right here. Two seconds. Let's go to the next question here. This is like a shake up right here. Everyone, kind Raven. You can do a kind Raven. Don't be kind Raven. You can win this. Let's find out who wins next. Compute the expected count, cell count for right-handed males. Ooh, this is a tricky question. Who has their calculator out? You're gonna need it for the next one too. It's very quick if you know how to do it. I'm gonna do it on screen right here as people are doing it to show you it. So, ah, sorry. So we have right-handed. So we do the column total right here. And then we do the row total for males. And then we divide that by the grand total. Row total times column total over grand total is the formula. We'll show it here in a second. And, oh no, we only got four people playing? Or do only four people? Murray, R. Spiegel. Is that the ones I'm thinking of? I'll show you the book here at the end, Andrew. Remind me. Let me show everyone how to calculate this. Do we only have four? Do we still have people playing? Do we lose everybody? Or did everyone just like freak out and was like, uh oh. So right here, I want to show you the trick for this. This is very important to 32474 to know how to do this. Um, yeah, email me a picture of it and I'll show you mine here in a second. I'll show you the stats book my dad gave me. So check this out. Remember we were talking about males who are right-handed, right? Males who are right-handed. So what we do is we circle this right here and we times it by the other one and then we divide by this. The formula is row total times column total over grand total. Can anyone tell me, so that's the row total times column total over grand total. Can anyone tell me the formula, what it would be if we wanted to figure out, uh, let's say 
males who are left-handed. Males who are left-handed. What would be the expected count for males who are left-handed? What would be the expected count for males who are left-handed? What would be the formula there? I'm going to draw it on the screen while you try to write in the chat. Males, left-handed, and then we have to do the expected count. So row total times column total over grand total. Exactly, Zach and Victoria, great job. And you might have figured out the mathematics. And all you do is you just connect in where they meet. So males who are left-handed, and then you do it over the total right there. So just very important to follow those steps and make sure you have it. Now, the answer to this question we're going to need, and I'm going to give you hints. Are you ready? This is a hint for the next question. I think the answer to this question was, because we're going to need it for the next one, the answer to this question was 275.4, which is a very small number. Well, it's very close to 272. So when we do the next formula, we're going to do the the uh, the discrepancy, which is a cell chi squared in classical statistics. It's the observed minus the expected quantity squared over expected. This is a cell chi squared. And does everyone see this is the observed value? Now make sure you have 275.2, I think it was, or 275.4. I better check before I hit enter. 275.4. 275.4 is equal to the expected, and you might need this formula right here, observed minus expected squared over expected to figure out a discrepancy for the next question. It's close competition. Who's going to win? Compute the discrepancy for right-handed males. Remember, 275.4 is the expected, expected value. It's in the chat right now. So what would it be? You have to do observed minus expected. So let's show right here while this question is going on. So people can see how to solve it. There's the expected. We got that from row total times row total times column total over grand total. We subtract from it the observed. We square that and we divide by the expected, which was 275.4. Observed minus expected squared over expected. Practicing the formula and just getting it down and understanding it. That we're doing observed minus expected squared over expected. And the way it would look is on the last problem, we figured out that the expected for this cell was equal to 275.4. I'm barely blocking it. And so then we would do observed of 272 minus the expected of 275.4. And then we take this difference and we square it and we divide by two, we divide by the expected. This is equal to the discrepancy or the cell chi squared. The cell chi squared. So with this, we got three more questions. Let's see who's going to win. Oh, speedy dragon speeding to the lead. Let's do the next question. Here we go. Which of the following is a univariate display? Oh, we're back to some stat tool one again. This is a question stat tool one and 320 should know which of these is a univariate display. Is it the whole contingency table, which has two variables? Is it the mosaic plot, which mosaic plots and contingency tables do the same things? Is it going to be the conditional distribution? And for the next question, which means we would say given, like given someone is male or given someone is ambidextrous or given someone is left-handed, or is it the distribution in the margins, which only shows one variable? The marginal distribution is the distribution in the margins. So it only shows one variable. So when you look at this right here, the marginal distribution of gender, uh, I need the button that makes me go away. Boop. Um, the marginal distribution of gender is right here, 386, 313, 699. That's the total. And then the marginal distribution of handedness is right here, 23, 61, 615. Does everyone see why we call it the marginal distribution and how it only has one variable? If you go across this, you're only looking at people's handedness. If you go across this, you're only looking at people's gender. Hence why we call it the marginal distribution. It's in the margin and it only has with it one variable we're looking at here, gender right here, because gender is this, and then we go here, here's how many females, here's how many males, here's the total, and then here's handedness, and we see the ambidextrous left and right-handed right there. So going on to the next question, and I need to appear back here. The next question is gonna be similar, so get ready. Golden boa, can you do a golden boa? Can you fend off speedy dragon? The answer is going to be, let's find out soon. Which of the following would use the word given when talking about the distribution? I'm not blocking the answer. Ah, let's go away over here a little bit more. Which of these uses given to talk about the distribution? So remember what I said earlier. The margin is just the margin down here. It's a univariate display of one variable. 
Bingo. Everyone, nice job listening up there. Everyone listening and saying, okay, wait, the conditional distribution is when we say like, given someone is female. Can anyone uh, tell me, given someone is female, what is the probability that they are, let's say, um, ambidextrous? So given someone is female, so, so, can someone show me the mathematics for the probability of given someone is female, what's the probability they're ambidextrous? Who in the chat can show me given someone is female, what is the probability that they are ambidextrous? Don't tell me the percent. I'm trying to, oh, it's probably the answer, Victoria. <laughs> okay, let me check Victoria's answer. Um, I'll be careful. Oh, wait, Victoria, remember, given someone is female, and I'm glad we did this right here. Victoria, you get an extra thousand points of the week. Thank you for playing along and doing answers right here. If you do, given someone is female, I'm trying to get the calculator where everyone can see it. Oh, wait, we can resize it. It's not going to fit on the screen so well. No, uh, it'll work right here. This will work. Okay, so people are putting it. Yep, great job, everybody. Everyone gets an extra thousand for being here. You get an extra thousand and you get an extra thousand. So uh, Victoria, so if you're here right now, everyone gets an extra thousand for the week, getting the 2000 points just for being here and having fun. Um, I really appreciate people being here at the Cahoots and making the fun. Yep, 2000. Yep, I said it. You're here having fun, working on some stuff, staying into the 32474 Cahoots. We'll deal with this in a moment here. But um, I was gonna say, you're welcome, Anita. Great job. We're trying to get everyone to the max points. I need to enter in all the points into Mubot here soon. Um, it's just it's just gonna be me sitting down and typing in a bunch of points, which is not that fun. Um, with this right here, I just want to explain that when you say given, you'll only look at the females. Does that make sense? If I say given male, you'll only look at males. So given someone is male, what's the probability that they're ambidextrous would be this right here. Now this differs from a question, what is the probability someone is ambidextrous and female? So what, tell me from this distribution, what is the probability someone is ambidextrous and female? So what is the probability someone is ambidextrous and female from this? What would be the math on that, which I think people were telling earlier. So there's a difference between like for the females, what percent are ambidextrous? Given someone is female, what percent are ambidextrous? So, well, so uh, be careful. Uh, that question right there, good, good, good shot at right there. That question would be, given someone is ambidextrous, what's the probability they're female? Does that make sense, Victoria, with that one? 12 over um, 23 would have to be phrased, given someone's ambidextrous, or for all the ambidextrous people, what percent are female? So we're kind of narrowing down to just ambidextrous people. But the question, what percent of people are ambidextrous and female, would be uh, 12 divided by 699. So 12 divided by 699 would be the question, what percent of, of people are ambidextrous and female? 12 divided by 23 would be what percent of ambidextrous are female? And then 12 divided by 386 would be what percent of females are ambidextrous? Or like given someone's female, what's the probability they're ambidextrous? So it, it can be very similar wording. You just have to be careful. Are we talking about only the ambidextrous people? Are we talking about all people? And usually we like to say given or for the females or uh, within the females. There's a lot of ways to phrase it that you're saying we're narr narrowing down to just this group. Like within the male population, what percent were left-handed? So within the male population, and you do divide by 313. So 30 out of 313. Within the male population, about 9.6% were left-handed. And that would be a conditional distribution for only the males in the population right there. And lots of good questions, lots of good reviews. But who's going to win? Will Calzone come back and win? It's going to be Golden Boa versus Wise Horse. Let's find out who's going to win right here. Describe the following p-value. Oh my gosh, I need to get out of the way really quickly. This is a tough question. I hope the graphic's big enough. P-value. When the p-value is low, reject the null. But now we have a confidence interval for it. More on this in a moment. There should only be one answer for if the p-value is significant or insignificant. That's pretty easy. How do we know if a p-value is insignificant or significant? When you look at this p-value right here, how do you know if the p-value is significant or insignificant? Who knows in the chat can help me out? Because it is insignificant. Oh, everyone said significant. This is a really good question. The 201, don't worry if you're here. Less than 0.05. So the p-value, if it's less than 0.05, would be significant. Now, if you're 201, just go la, 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 because you won't see this in the next part in 201. But the, the important thing for 201 right now should be if the p-value is less than 0.05, it is statistically significant. This p-value is high. Just let it fly. Don't don't reject the null. That's a high p-value. We do not have a statistically significant p-value. So that's the 201 part of it. 
Now the 32474 part of it is, do you see this interval right here? And this interval right here is an estimate of the p-value. So we're saying, I think the p-value could be as low as 0.621, or it could be as high as 0.805. Now, what is that important value again? 0.05. We don't want to see 0.05 in this interval. So tell me, is 0.05 in this interval yes or no? Is 0.05 in this interval yes or no? Is it? It's not. So since it's not in the interval, that means our interval is conclusive. Because if 0.05 was in the interval, and I'll do a really quick drawing right here, I can draw this out pretty quickly. When we get our p-value, this is very important for 201, what I'm about to say, all p-values range between 0 and 1. Every p-value is a probability and ranges between 0 and 1. A very important value for us to see is 0.05. We want to see if we if we want to reject null, we want p-values less than 0.05, which means the results, our results or results from our stream, how would have by random chance about less than 5% of the time. So what we could get is we could get this interval A right here. And notice how interval A would have a p-value at the center of it, and the interval is below 0.05. We could get this interval B right here, and this interval B, notice how interval B might be statistically significant, or it might not be statistically significant. So the reason you don't want 0.05 in the interval is you're saying, I think my p-value might be in this range. So if we make an interval for what our p-value might be, like the actual p-value, you'd be like, well, don't you know your p-value? In this form of statistics, we estimate our p-value due to with random permutations. I'm, I don't, I won't say the whole thing right now. Um, watch the lecture on it. But hopefully, this concept right here is very evident that when your interval is conclusive, it what the interval, like the lower part of the interval versus to the upper part of the interval what would not be in it if the interval is conclusive for all the 32474 is watching if your interval is conclusive it what a conclusive interval will what like to say the interval is conclusive on the significance or insignificance of the p-value and so here's an answer a and b uh, a and c excuse me a and c exactly you need a great job right there a and c are conclusive A and C are conclusive and B is inconclusive because with B, with B you're saying it might be significant or it might not be significant. With B, it's kind of like, well, maybe it's significant, maybe it's not significant. And when we look at our results right here, we would look at our results and we would say, okay, our p-value is insignificant and this interval is conclusive because it doesn't contain 0.05. So we're saying it could be as low as this or it could be as high as this, but either way, it's not significant because 0.05 is not in the interval and that's what we concluded here. So it is conclusive. Let's find out who the winner is. DS2474 Kahoot, wise horse, wise horse. Guys, gross hit, nice. BD Dragon and Golden Boa in first place. Nine out of 10, great job. A little bit harder of a Kahoot. Calzone, if you're still here, great job. You were in the lead for a moment, that was awesome. Calzone is stiff competition. And I put the Easter egg in. I was hoping Calzone would drop by one of these days again to show his points. Did I somehow put Mubot in here twice? He's here twice. I like Calzone's our only legendary tier. You had the lead, King Bowser? That's awesome. Let me see right here. I think I can go over here and take a look at the book. I'm gonna go take a look at the book real quick. Let's see. I don't see the book. Where's the book? Where's the book? Nothing not updating. I've got all these messages from someone named Brian Stevens sending me Kahoot updates. <laughs> oh man, we need to broadcast on Twitch again. I need to complete the whole thing to get partnered on Twitch. I wonder why it's not... I'll have to look, Andrew. I don't see it. Or it's just my... Sometimes email's being weird. Who knows what's going on? I don't know what's going on. Drop over to the coup train. I will take a look at it. Yeah, that's, it should be through. I don't know why it's... Yeah. It should be. Maybe it's just being weird. My last update came at 4.55, so... I don't like using Outlook. I just don't like the way Outlook runs. I've never liked it. I will take a look. Any other last questions? Any other last, oh, 
waiting for players. Waiting for players? What's going on? We will we will go back here to the world. We've got Kahoot in the background. We got some Punch Out playing. There was someone who's telling me about playing Punch Out. I was like, yeah, I play Punch Out. Some Mike Tyson's Punch Out. One of the great puzzle games from the early 90s, I believe. Punch Out probably came out in 91. I will return awesome. My apartment mates love Punch Out. Dude, Punch Out is so good. It's a puzzle game because you have to figure out the patterns. So it's, it's a very early puzzle game. People don't realize that. It's like, because things have just patterns. So you have to figure it out. It's awesome stuff right there. I think that's got it. Let's put up the, the background. Oh, we got the marble button here. With that, I have to, <laughs> I lost to Glass Joe on my first game. No. Glass Joe has like, Glass Joe has like one win. Glass, so that's your, that was the one win. Glass Joe, be, I'm sorry, Andrew. Glass Joe has like literally one win. I probably lost to Glass Joe too. I was probably like eight when I played Punch Out or nine or 10. I probably played when it first came out. They're like, this new game Punch Out. And I was like, oh, dude. So see, people are going to look at that the way I look at like people playing Pong. Like Pong consoles is like, to me, what playing Nintendo would be to, like, I mean, I saw Pong consoles growing up, but um, like that would be like, my parents played that in the 70s. Like that was coming out. If you've ever seen a Pong console, like Sears and stuff would make these like literal department stores were selling video game systems that only played pong so you didn't have like a a cartridge or anything to put in it you just bought a system that just played pong think about think about those things we buy nowadays that have like pac-man on it like that just plays pac-man you buy this little like you know game thing that a kid buys and it just plays pac-man you'd buy that and hook it up to your tv to only play pong and um you know how far we've advanced now that you can buy like a nintendo mini that just has like every nintendo game on it and i mean and that thing could house, I mean, it doesn't have every Nintendo game. It has, what, like 40 or 50 of the best games that they could get licensed. But um, you could literally build a Nintendo Pie, and you could have something the size of, like, a credit card that basically plays every Nintendo game. You just need, you basically need a, enough for a micro SD card. You need enough for an HDMI port, and that's about it. And a processor, I guess. Processor, RAM, HDMI port, micro SD card slot. I mean, Raspberry Pis are the size of a credit card. It's insane. And then you could literally be like, yeah, here's my Nintendo. And then I guess a controller port. Or you do some wireless controller port. I don't know. Wireless controllers. I still, I still, even though I use wireless controllers, I miss wired controllers. I miss some some GameCube, some N64, some wire. I mean, WaveBirds were great. See, that's the thing. Like when WaveBirds came out, this is my last little rant right here, and then we'll go. When WaveBirds came out, WaveBirds, yeah, I played Frogger. I you, The last time I played Frogger was actually at a pizzeria in Knoxville in like 2016 gonna be sad when we were like whoa 2016 that's forever ago but um we went to the walmart that's far away on chapman highway i think i think that's the i always get the roads confused uh, i was so it might not even be open now it was a walmart that was super far away on chapman highway and we had to go there to get something that they had in stock i can't remember what it was and then we went there and there was a pizzeria so we're like okay let's just order a pizza while we're here and we'll come back out and get the pizza we went to Walmart. We went back to the pizzeria. They didn't have the pizza ready. So I saw Frogger. Oh, no. That was Pac-Man. I don't know the last time I played. I played Frogger in arcades. If you go to an arcade, or Frogger is, you know, it'll be in an arcade every once in a while. That was Pac-Man, though. I started to remember more, and I was like, okay, it was Pac-Man. And I think it was Miss Pac-Man because it had all the different, like, I don't know. They're very similar. Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man. So I think Miss Pac-Man might be better. My dad has an Atari. I play it. On, yeah, Atari's pretty cool. Like, there's a bunch of good games. Like it's shocking to see what you can do. There's this guy, uh, Ed McMillan, I think his name is. Hopefully, I'm not getting his last name incorrect. He makes the games like uh, Super Meat Boy, Binding of Isaac, uh, The End Is Nigh. Um, you got uh, Coin Game and all that other stuff. He made Bind uh, Binding of Isaac, The Four Souls. Or no, is that is that the real one? Did they add on? I don't know. He makes all these games right here, um, but they're all indie games. He's made so many different games. I was watching an interview with him earlier today, but I've played a ton of his games. And just, I think I was first introduced to him with Super Meat Boy, which is a really fun game, really crazy fun game. And then, of course, Isaac. So I think, Andrew, we've talked about Isaac, maybe. I put an insane amount of time into Isaac. I also play a lot of Tetris, Dr. Mario. You know what's weird? I like Tetris, and I don't like Dr. Mario. I like Space Invaders, too. But I just, I don't, I like a, there's a game called Tetris Attack. Is that what I'm thinking of? Or Yoshi's Cookie? There's, um, I think it's Tetris Attack for the Super Nintendo. It's one of my favorite games ever. 
I'd play that game all the time. There was a department store. And my parents like would drop me off at the mall as like a 10 year old kid or, and I would like go into the department store and they'd like be like, okay, we'll pick you up here in three hours. And just imagine a kid in a department store playing a Super Nintendo. I don't even know why this department store, I guess they were advertising games and they just had a Super Nintendo hooked up on the counter. And I would just, is it, I think Yoshi's Cookie is a different game. I think it's Tetris Attack. I'm pretty sure it's Tetris Attack I'm thinking about. It's probably Tetris Attack. I think it's Tetris Attack. Yeah, it's Tetris Attack. Yoshi's Cookie is a different game. I think it's just that it, like Yoshi's in the game, so I'm always thinking it's like Yoshi's in the game. Um, but it's such a good you you turn the blocks and everything. Oh, I found King Bowser in it. I'll show you it right here. King Bowser is definitely in this. Play it online? What? We don't want to advertise for them. Tetris Attack. <laughs> it's such a good game. Oh man, now I want to play Tetris Attack. I've got I've got an original SNES. There's King Bout. Oh, they're, yeah, they're emulating or something. That does, it looks a little off. I'll show it here in two seconds. We can model down and let me bring up the things. But yeah, it's Tetris Attack. That's probably so small I can't see it. Let's go over here to the Word document. There it is. There is Tetris Attack. There was like an advertisement on it for like some random, but um, you you turn the blocks in it. So in Tetris Attack, you you can shift two blocks like between each thing, and you have to make patterns. And then it's easy to make patterns, but when you make like really, have I heard of Tasmania? Yeah, Tasmania. That was a game on Super Nintendo, right? Shout out to the two other people still here. <laughs> they probably just haven't closed the browser yet. Yeah, I, I remember Tasmania. I mean, I know I know Tasmanian Taz the Tasmanian Devil. Um and I think I remember the Tasmania game. I think I don't know if I played it much. I you know, I may have done emulation and stuff like that. You know, I don't know. I mean, I I own so many video games, it's insane. Like Nintendo has made their money over on me a billion times. Um, not that yeah, anyways. But um you were down a row and try to eat birds. I think I think I remember that. It's like those Looney Tune games are not often the best games. Um, was it any good? There was like a Roadrunner game too. To think that they make a game out of the Roadrunner, like nowadays, how many games? I mean, I guess we have Flash games and stuff like that. We have like small little games that go on Steam or stuff like that that are like little throwaway games that no one really plays. But then some of those games can be really fun and interesting if they're just a simple concept that's just executed really well. Like, um, what is it? Uh, Jump King, that's a game I've thought about. I also tried like uh, getting over it. That was fun. I got I got pretty good at getting over. I didn't get really good, but I played it a bit and got pretty high on the mountain on getting over it. And I got to some of those areas and I was just like, okay, I I played this enough because I was just playing in my spare time and I don't know. I was like, I can beat this. And I got really far with my first attempt because I'd watched a bunch of YouTubers play it, so I kind of knew what was coming. I knew like each little thing, and I, maybe that takes some of the mystique out of it also. Because I've seen, I haven't seen the final room though, because I don't think they let all that online. And I was like, I'm not going to look at that. Maybe one of these days I'll go back and play the the game and beat it. But um, because it's like, don't be streaming. Like it says like that if you get there, because I've seen people go to the moon. It lets you see that and that doesn't show you the last thing. But I think that's got it. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Andrew. I appreciate it. I'll start, you know, one of these days I keep talking about streaming games on Twitch. I've got the whole Twitch thing set up. It's just every time we try to stream to Twitch and YouTube, we crash, and I don't know what's going on. Mewbot's being weird today. I don't know what's going on with that either. He's probably all right. He's just, he's a little weird sometimes, which is all right. It's all right to be weird. Mewbot, we we still love you. What do you say to us, Mewbot, as we head out right here? As we head out, Mewbot, what is he going to tell us? Vols help Vols, and healthcare is connected to living. That is good advice, Mewbot. But I will see you later, Andrew. You can expect an email next semester about the Mario Kart. Yes. We need to make that happen and hopefully the world is more back to normal because you know what if i have the tv i just noticed the way they did this huh i've been doing too much graphics stuff lately um if i have the tv in my office again you know it'd be really nice if students could just come in and have like a normal semester when you can come and see people i mean we're doing the semester we're the right way right now but if things are back to normal ish you know we're going to try to you know be as social and be as interactive as we can but of course, we're going to do it the right way and do it within the guidelines of, you know, rolling things out as we should. So, but I'm all for, you know, 
as much as fun as we can make things and you know you know we have it in if we have mario kart there so we maybe have like a mario kart competition in the office every once in a while during non-office hours who knows i'm all for it anyways that's got it i will talk to everyone later good talking to you andrew good seeing you so bye everybody bye